This is St. Paul's. It's a district in the centre of the city of Bristol. There are areas like it in most of our large cities. In St. Paul's, people of many different origins live together. English, Irish, West Indian, Asian. This film is about the West Indian community. It was shot in the autumn of 1980 by a multiracial BBC film crew in close collaboration with the local population. It is a collective self-portrait by the community. The people speak for themselves. They describe their life, they talk about education and the police, and they demonstrate their identity, their culture, through music, dance and poetry. Dressing up your ignorance with respectability, beating down your culture and your history, scorning the words of upfulness, calling them illusions, fighting down your brothers and sisters, practicing discrimination, screwing up your face when you see us on the streets, calling us a disgrace to the human race. But don't try to lecture I and I with your false sense of directions. Well, let me tell you, selfish one, your children know where they are going. So when will you learn, oppressive ones, will you ever learn? If I live in St. Paul's and you live in Clifton, you may be the villain and I'm the just man. But just because I'm living in St. Paul's, I'm supposed to be a villain. You know, that's judging the book by the cover. the music as the trumpet that they're talking about in the Bible. You know, it's a message and that's the way we communicate as black people. If you check back deep down in Africa a long time ago, um, they used to communicate from village to village with the drums. So now we communicate with the reggae music. People in St. Paul's are mixed. I mean, you have Asians, West Indians, Africans, and English, Irish. I mean, it's, it's a whole sort of melting pot of different people. On the whole, I think they are, they're all under the same pressures. They are suffering from three main things. Cultural alienation, economic impotence, and political Ignorance. 
most of them come here just to play games and things like that, you know? Because probably staying in they might bore and things like that. Look at the little place what look at the little place what they give us. There's nothing else you can do in here except play machine. That's all you can do in here. Just play machine. Because this is how we're allowed to have. The reason why I come here is so that I can see my brethren then. Yeah, I know that they're safe then. Because there's times when you come in here and it will be rampart then. Yeah? And the reason for that then, yeah, is because it's not safe, at, not even safe at your own house then. Because, because police just come in here and they just kick off the door and they arrest you and nobody would know. I, I know my name now, yeah? I know my name, and I know where I come from, and I know where I'm going, yeah? And they tried to stop me from going there. Well, pe people is very funny, especially colored people. If you push them around too much, you find them very, very, very nasty. And it's like you think you could fight them. You can't fight them because they'll organize and they, they're just ganging. <laughs> Open up those doors of perception for out there in the field of awareness, your army is passing through down from the last of the jazzy on the
everything a kid do over here is booked and lives with them. Some kids always have it thrown back into their faces. So they become more resentful and everything. Some of us could live with things and overcome it, but some of us just don't have the ability to overcome these things when it's constantly being thrown back at us. Even in the Caribbean, you have police and people in authority to keep law and order. So where authority is concerned, we are accustomed to that. But the difference is the way they are handled. If they see a black youth driving a car, they're being stopped. They don't have to do anything wrong. They're being stopped and questioned if the vehicle is theirs. Yes, fine. It's routine that they would come over with. But it is so obvious that they have to stop them. And with my experience, I have no other choice but to think that they are being pressured somewhere along the line. In school, they don't teach us nothing about black history. All you learn about is pure white history. White history. Where are you going to go? You don't know nothing about your country, where you come from, or, and the foreign country where you're living in. Is that no more you're going to know about? Mlango. 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 out and do what you want and just living in St. Paul itself you go to an employer and he says to you well I'm afraid we let you know and they don't let you know
There is a difference between the two age groups, as you would say. This is a modern way. There's a different way of life over here to the way that we were brought up back home. How do you define a black man's culture? It, it is very difficult because there are things which bind wherever black man finds himself, whether it is in South America or America or England. That is that there's always the striving to go back to their African roots. Back to Africa is a sort of um, in the mind situation, a psychological situation, where you have to identify with certain things that you find yourself doing, but not knowing why you do it.
was good, but I'd like to see you using your body a bit more. This dance, what we're going to do now, is called Ghanam. This dance is a social dance from Ghana. This dance is done. So we're going to go through the basic steps of Ghanam, which is quite simple. So Angie and me will take you through that. Okay. We'll be moving on our right, right leg and our hips are going opposite to our legs and it's in two beats right, right, left, left okay In 1930, Ailis Lati, Emperor of Ethiopia, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, was crowned through Rastafari. Truly. In the last World War, six million Jews were killed and they were compensated with Palestine. As Africans in this time, 50 million Africans were killed in slavery. If one look at the economic system of the world, they will see the world is in a recession. In other European states, when there is a recession and there are immigrant workers, they throw them out again. A lot of Turkish workers in other European states, and they've been, they've been sent home forcefully. Rastafari, not going to wait for that time when they are going to throw us out. We want to leave right now. Exploiting of black people. That must stop here. You know? Yes, it must have to stop. The economy of our country and the wealth of our country is brought to Europe where Europeans lavish it in all kind of filthiness and corruption. Exploiting our people. Nearly 500 years now. Africa must be free. Must be free, We are, I and I seek repatriation. But repatriation is compensation. Not sure, yeah? You know? If they were to repay everything they took from us. Could never be an era. And thankful and grateful nations. You know? Bloody city. Truly. Right now, they rob Africa of all African arts and culture and sculpture. The greatest artistic nation, people in the world, are burning from West Africa. 
and I wasn't told that at school. We have to go out and find out afterwards. They tell us that we are illiterate and we are ignorant. But when you look deep down into it, they, they just want to cover up the history book. They don't want I and I to know our past. They want to keep us as serfs. But Rastafari know different, and Rastafari know that no man is better than no one Rasta. Man is man. man, is man. Everywhere you go, black people is the lowest form of living. Only a minority reaches any standard. We know also that there is no love coming from the Europeans, nor from the Chinese, nor from any other nation, because they're all looking for themselves. That's why when we sum up and we know, we, we add up and we see the situation of the world, of what it was yesterday and what it is, what it is today, we know that we can only live in Africa. All the poor slavers to the about black history, books, they about Africa, all the great kings is in Africa. I'll hear about King Henry, King John, King Charles, and Margaret, and you name it, you know what I'm dealing with. I think the black youth that born here, what he have to do is look upon himself as a black man. We, uh, the black man always have to struggle for his right. Keep struggling because there's no other way out because he's black. But this thing about his going back to Africa, he might as well count it out and try and live in the country where he's born. Thank you. 
these children in school now are the future generation. That's right. So we want to get all this agro out of their system. Agro towards society, agro towards the police, agro towards their elders. Look there, Emily, on the one I'm holding. You have to tighten the um, paper clips. Sometimes they throw you some crumbs. You get a little sympathy, very little sympathy, you know, just to enable you to go on until the next challenge comes your way. Understand? And since we are unable to fit him to the system, and the system has rejected us and make it almost impossible to fit into it, then the law, the law itself, criminalizes us. He's just as much a criminal on account of the color of his skin. And I expect every liberal white to throw up his arm in the air tomorrow and says, Roy De Freitas is talking bloody rubbish. The only trouble that the, the ones who are doing so have never been black. And let any, any of them choose to be black for 24 hours and then turn around and tell me that I'm wrong. Until then, I'm bloody right until they can prove I'm wrong by being black themselves. To the powers of the most, oh, jump. kids are not leaving it to God, you know. They feel that they can react with the power that God gives them. When you have the light inside of you, you can smile at anything. It doesn't mean to say you're not in pain. Of course you're in pain. But how you see that pain is completely different, you know, because it is a pleasure when you're persecuted for God's sake. You don't feel persecuted. You have to survive, innit? You have to find a means of way of surviving. To survive, yeah, eh? yeah. Well, this is what it's all about around here, St. Paul's, so, to survive. In fact, I don't think there is a black problem at all. It is a white problem. And uh, the problem will go away just as soon as the white begin to do something about it. I mean, there, there isn't any black problem. The black people have got on, like here and elsewhere, looking after themselves, in fact, they've turned inwards.
They are going to have children, and their children are going to have children, and there will be always black people in England. And they brought us here in the first place, so we've all got to sit here, and Mr. Enoch Powell helped to get us over here, and he'll have to accept us. So therefore, there's no going back that they're going to get every black people back out of this country. There's no way it's going to happen. Time guides man destiny, so wake up and face reality. Can't go nowhere being with superstitions and fear. So learn to live with dignity, embrace humanity, and stop having problems, my friends. Mm -hmm. 